in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed We started last week defining a lot of things, terminologies. We spoke about success. We spoke about the reality of laws. Please get part one if you were not here. We don't have all the time to go back. But um, I just want to do a quick recap on the first law. We began to discuss the laws and the principles. I told us that laws create predictability. Say predictability. When you operate by laws, your results become consistent regardless of what the opposing forces are. You don't approach life emotionally. You will fail. Life is too dynamic for just emotionalism. You must approach life from a standpoint of exact understanding. There are principles that produce consistent results and God is helping us to understand. The first law that we looked at last week was the law of relationships. I cannot, um, I cannot tell you how many testimonies already have come in, strange testimonies as a result of this one understanding. The fastest way to become successful is through quality relationships. It is a law that governs success. I said last week that anything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Anything at all. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for, for sure. The distance between you and the next level of your life is a relationship. Who knows you matters in the school of success. Who you meet matters. Who likes you matters. Are we together now? These are the mysteries that many well-meaning believers do not know. They do not understand. And so we pray in tongues. We fast. We are um, excited. But then we fail woefully in almost every other area of life. I said a few things about relationships um, that I think is important we pay attention to. I said how that relationship is an investment. The same way you invest in stocks, the same way you invest in agriculture, the same way you invest in your shop, the same way you invest in education, that is how you invest in relationships. It will cost you. Are we together now? relationships will cost you your ego relationships will especially from the part of the one who is the chief recipient there are many people whose arrogance will not allow them invest in quality relationships that will build and jimmy used to say that one of the um, greatest things that can happen to a man is to partner with a man who is building something great 50 naira invested in a quality relationship today can give you an estate tomorrow what an investment there are many foolish believers who are not part of anybody's success story there is no future for a man who is not part of anybody's success story someone should be able to say you discerned the grace of god upon him and stretched a right hand of fellowship when the rest could not see it my life is blessed today by the grace of god because i have i i was able to discern people discern potentials discern greatness even when the the custodians of those virtues did not know it see there are certain things you do that will pay you for life one of it is discerning greatness and investing in it through quality relationships i gave an instance of people who have been so instrumental in my life these were people who had the eyes to see when there were no physical results and today i owe them partnership to make sure they succeed regardless of what their personal failures are their the risk they took to believe in me 
is a debt that I must pay for a lifetime. Who owes you gratitude because of a quality relationship? Muslims have this. They know this. They excel overnight because of the capacity to discern. Many believers have this ugly thinking that because all of us can approach God directly, we don't need men. You will always need men for as long as you are alive. Make reference to my teaching, The Gift of Men. You need relationships. I told us relationships are advantageous connections. Advantageous connections. There are nonsense and foolish relationships and we received grace last week to get out of it. I hope that that grace worked for you during the week because there are relationships that are going nowhere. Complete. Um, you have to be connected. You have to be connected. In ministry, you have to be connected strategically. In business, you have to be connected. We call it networking. In politics, you have to be connected. You ask Honorable here, he will tell you. You cannot rise, no matter what God told you. That is your business. But as far as impact is concerned, God told me I will be great. Thank God he didn't tell everybody. He told you, you must understand the wisdom keys that will make others buy into that vision relationships will require being friendly the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly this attitude of wanting people to be this you are not my class you are not my uh, what do we call it my size you are not my expectation is what is the costly mistake people have made that some are still paying for it today and they will pay forever you must have the discernment Jesus understood that as powerful as his agenda was, he needed men. And so he was able to invest in them. Regardless of their failures, he watched them as they stumbled, they fell. Relationship is not about perfection. Relationship is about understanding. You must know that perfection is not a requirement for relationship. Replace perfection with sincerity of heart. Are we learning now? Please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. This is not one of the ways people become great. This is the way people become great. You can earn a living through relationships. There are people who are not doing anything. You look at them and you think they are, they are occultists or they deal in drugs. They have invested in the lives of too many people for them to fail. They can sit down at home yet they are all, thank you, they Thank you pays them salary every month without retirement. God is giving you an opportunity today to make quality relationships that will bless you tomorrow. It's a lesson I learned from my father like I told us last week. My father knows somebody almost everywhere. If it's an armed robber, he knows a policeman somewhere who can show up when required. Are we together now? If it's for discount for fertilizer, somebody somewhere. He knows someone in the ministry of Agri. If it's to help you bring your car from Cotonou, there is somebody he knows. What a wise way of living. I watch relationship pay many bills for my father. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you use only money, to pay for everything in life everything in life is bought but money is not the only currency integrity is currency relationships are currencies heavier and weightier currencies the, the least valuable of all the currencies that we use to purchase things in life is finances trust me when I say this someone will not give you money but he will give you what you would have bought with the money he gave you two things access and he took away pain from your life are we together now we must trust god for grace to be able to access quality relationships one of the points that i did not mention last week that i i think that i must stress before we continue is what i teach in the school of ministry i teach our school of ministry students um, i call it the fundamental law of human relations and it's important i'm going to state it i want you to understand there is a key 
to attracting people to your life it is the ability to satisfy the highest psychological need of every man you must know it and the highest psychological need of any man at all including you any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued or valuable and the need to feel appreciated please write it down any man will die to see this happen in his life the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated please write it down and let's talk a little about that because many believers think that just because you are born again relationships will happen overnight no people have lost contracts worth billions because they have intelligence but no relationships and in the body of Christ we have this ugly way of saying I don't need anybody I'm not talking of some negative Godfatherism somebody must recommend you somewhere are we together now come my dear come to now everybody I want you to give them a round of applause smile while you are doing that two of them I will tell you why just clap for them generously and truthfully keep clapping don't stop this is for two of you now keep clapping I didn't ask you to stop praise God God bless you now watch them what are they both doing or what were they both doing do you think if you ever tell them I'm a bad man they will believe you no I satisfied in one minute the highest psychological need of any man by this act they don't even know what they did but I gave them an impression of being loved I gave them an impression of being valued I gave them an impression of being appreciated brothers let me give you a big secret do this you are 50% gone to get a very good godly lady frown your face praying alone and I show you the way to misery regardless of spirituality yes time tested rock solid principles are we together the Bible says laughter listen when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter not love love is still there but laughter disappears every time there is restoration it is backed up with laughter when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream and they said among the hidden the Lord had turned again their captivity and all of that you know Sarah laughed all who hear this will laugh with me the ability to keep men loved the ability to keep men um feel appreciated the ability to keep men valuable is the grandest key to establishing quality relationships when you say this person is likable whether consciously or subconsciously their personality or their training has brought them to a position where they present a disposition to people that make them feel loved everyone on earth is running away from where they are hated to where they are loved and that location can be a human being they can leave you and live with the money they have and live with the access they have to someone else they I'm not talking of flattery and lies by the grace of God we have a large workforce in this ministry I am I am intrigued it never ceases to amaze me the level of commitment and diligence of the workers in this ministry and this is true from my heart truly speaking you see wise people are clapping a politician is clapping because he understands the implication of this but many people that's why you are in in the school of the spirit why do you think in campaigns anybody just says anything and they clap they are not clapping because they understand what was said they know it's a key it's a key to what you will go home with it's a key to what you might lose never allow your life be the reason for someone's tears and misery at least not with your consciousness there are some of us who have an 
ugly disposition towards people. This lady is so ugly. You are just seeing the person for the first time and you are acting that way. This lady is so slim. This lady is so plumpy. This lady is not, she can't even speak English. She's not my class. I show you the person who will pay for everything by himself. Because years to come, you will open the office you are trusting for help and see the, the victim of your mockery seated with the biro that can change your life and say the door you came with, follow it and go out. On wise decisions, some of our parents made those decisions and they are still paying for it till today. Cheap opportunities that they would have reason. These are laws. They will never be bent. They will never change. I came from a background where we were told that when you relate with people of influence, it affects your spiritual life. And for a very long time, I walked in that foolishness until I understood the kingdom. Now, I'm a friend of every influential person. You can be in the world and not be of the world. You can be in a system and not be corrupted by the system. The chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general. You touch me, two people punish you from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. Yeah. For sure. There are many well-meaning men of God who have no one to speak for them and they come and collect a land. They spend 200 million naira buying the land, investing to raise it to its foundation. Someone comes and put a big X. No prayer will change it. It remains there. The prayer needs a man. The angels roam around the earth. Did you apply a law that authorizes us to walk? Where is the human vessel we'll speak to? There's no one, but you are a prayer warrior. You see, no truth in the kingdom was designed to replace another. They complement. Are we together now? You have relationships, you don't pray, you will suffer. No spirit talks to any man, nobody helps you. But you can pray, you can fast, you are a, a student of the word, but you don't have strategic connections. Jesus was a man who understood this principle. When it was time for him to get into Jerusalem, he said, go, there's somebody who has a coat. If he asks you, tell him the master has need of it. The man did not refuse. Connections. Are we together now? Jesus had relationships. He had people he could send. Do you know what it means to send 72 people to go and return back with loyalty? David was a great man, ordained to be king, anointed, but his anointing could not help him. He was in a cave called Adullam until relationships came certain men came and they vowed they said david we will make sure you are king what if they were lying to kill him the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor don't forget that scripture in the multitude of men not gold not silver in the multitude of men access to the hearts of men gives you true Access to the hearts of men gives you true honor. Are we together now? Value relationships. Don't lose relationships to look for money. That's, that's not wisdom. Don't lose relationships to look for job, look for opportunity. It's better to lose a job and keep a valuable relationship. Because when everyone in your circle of influence is rising, you will be blessed by association. A message I preached in 2008. That a man can be blessed by association. God called Abraham alone and Lot went with him. How did Lot get blessed? Not by any personal revelation. As God lifted Abraham, he lifted him. Relationships. How did jo Joseph come out of the pit? He, di uh, he, he didn't just have gift enough. Gift alone could not bring him out. There was a relationship he established with a wine presser. It was the wine presser that told the king, I remember my wrongs. Two years ago, there was a man who interpreted my dream. He said, go and fetch him. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I'd like you to pray in one minute, bless you darlings, and say, Lord, give me the gift of men. Strategic alliances. Valuable connections that can become keys 
let my life not become a padlock to many valuable relationships please pray Lord let there be a man to speak for me in the days of adversity let me not fight alone hallelujah please sit down there a particular man of God was sharing his encounter with Bishop Oyedepo. He used to be a pastor in living faith before he went to start his own work, doing a great work for God. And when he went to his father in the Lord, Bishop Oyedepo, and said that, Sir, what one advice will you give me? He said Bishop Oyedepo told him, the interpre you know, I'm, I'm giving the English interpretation, but he told him in Yoruba, he said, young man, never fight alone. You will not win. Did you hear what he said? Never fight alone. Nobody fights alone. Ask David. David went alone, but he didn't fight alone. He said, you come against me with your spears and all, but I come against you in partnership to a name. Relationship. Every great man knows that his wealth is tied to relationships. When you see a man mysteriously wealthy, people don't say this guy has a brain. They say he has gone somewhere. He fraternized with someone. Let's hurry up. Walk with relationships and you will be amazed at the doors they will open. Only four people to meeting and accessing any breakthrough you desire. Statistically confirmed. The distance between you and your prayer request it's not just a destiny helper away but statistically speaking somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that's how naman was healed a little slave girl who knew a prophet who could take him there and he received this miracle hallelujah law number two take notes if you can get the teachings and listen with all your heart law number two that is part of the success systems of God is the law of value another word is the law of difference you can write the law of value slash difference please write it down the law of value Exodus chapter 4 verse 2 Exodus chapter 4 verse 2 the law of value the law of value those outside if you are with me shout amen God bless you. Please make sure that the rain doesn't interrupt you. I know that you are not having the best of conditions, but trust me, what you are hearing now will bail you and cause you to bail others. Praise the Lord. The law of value. It says, and the Lord said unto him, what is that in thy hand? And he said, a rod. Verse 2. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. Go to verse 2. That's just verse 2. That's what I wanted. And the Lord said unto him, What is it in your hand? And he said, A rod. It is impossible to be sent on earth with nothing. Are we together? What do you have in your hand? That was the weapon that Moses used. God will always use what is in your hand. He will anoint you but the anointing will flow through what is in your hand. The anointing needs a physical channel to find expression. And the conduit that gives it expression to bless you is what you have in your hands. In 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2. A woman was dying. They are about to sell her children because her prophet husband had died and could not... Um, they gave the children as a collateral and when she came to the prophet elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee then he says tell me what do you have in your before they received breakthrough they were all asked what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house write this down the law of value states that your value which can be your skill your gift, your ability is your difference and creates your rewards. Your value is your difference and it creates 
your rewards in the realm of greatness men are rewarded based on their value not based on their needs not based on their desire the idea of something for nothing is nonsense it doesn't exist value your skill your gift your ability which is also your difference now listen a, a wise man dr mike mudok a, a true apostle of wisdom said this he said your similarities decide your comfort but it is your difference that decides your rewards birds of the same birds of the same feather flock together even if they are failing they fail together but when you want to succeed truly speaking there must be your difference another word for that difference is your uniqueness it is your gift that brands you to stand out there are many people in church wallowing in so much ignorance waiting for god to step in and change their lives whereas god is asking them if you will give me the rod my duty is to anoint the rod and cause it to produce supernatural results my duty is to anoint the oil and cause it to multiply beyond your ability when it was time to feed five thousand people nothing produces a harvest of nothing and jesus said look i can't do anything go and look for bread he said feed them they said we don't have anything even a year's wages will not be able to cater for them and then andrew found a young boy with five loaves and two fish and he brought it and the bible says jesus lifted it and gave thanks god anoints your gift he does not anoint nothing you have to understand this there are many people angry at god angry at government angry at parents spouses angry with themselves not knowing that the key to any man's breakthrough has been left to him the day you decide to pay attention to the law of value that day you are ready to exit failure you are ready to exit suffering value your value creates your rewards and there are two dimensions to rewards there is a tangible dimension the money now the cars houses all the physical things that come and there is the intangible dimension the fulfillment that you get the satisfaction the peace that is derived write a few points down your value decides who pursues you ah. your value decides who pursues you you know what i mean by value now your gift your skill your ability whether supernatural whether natural if nobody is following you it's because you have not done anything about your value it doesn't mean you are not valuable it's that you've not done anything with it because he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto one one there is nobody with zero nobody with zero your value decides who pursues you and i wrote something down here i says who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward your reward is dependent on the kind and the quality of men that seek you for your value please learn this many of our parents are angry nobody is seeking them to expect rewards for doing nothing is fraud There are many people who sit down and just wish that things change. They get angry at every rich man. They get angry at every successful man. And they think everyone is diabolic. Everyone is a crook. No, no. Your value sets you apart in the school of greatness. Your value sets you apart in the school of success. Please learn this. The difference between you and any man you admire is value redefined value refined sorry i meant to say value refined enough to be identified and pursued dr mike mudok said a problem is an invitation for reward the problems around you are god inviting you to come and step to a greater level 
every time you pray for the throne a goliath will stand before you he who kills goliath is the one who sits on the throne you don't desire the throne without the ability to kill goliath so before he arrives you learn how to kill learn how to kill goliath the king put a price tag three things whoever is able to kill goliath number one he will be you will receive the king's daughter for a wife two he and his family will be exempted from tax three he will be given great riches and honor and david said that's a deal let me teach you a great mystery never fight any battle till you know what the reward is there are foolish battles without rewards you sweat and kill yourself and at the end you find out there's no reward never fight any battle until you know what the reward is is god helping us i teach our school of ministry students um certain things and let me let me just borrow this from one of the um, I teach them this under finance until there is a problem that you can solve you are unnecessary write this and let me show you the key to what we call inferiority the key to what we call complex this bitterness and hatred we have towards great people there is nobody that was born to just be following others we decide our destinies until there is a problem that you can solve it is unnecessary if you are not sick you don't need benny Hinn. if you are not foolish you don't need mike Modoc. are we together now if you are not sick you don't need a doctor you don't need any furniture work you don't need a carpenter as much as doctors like healing people and ministering health to people the only way they continue eating is when they are sick people oh you have a problem go and lie down while you are lying down the victim the person who brought you goes to the cashier doesn't sit down in the office you go to the cashier you pay am i right please yes the doctor sympathizes with you dear lord the god of heaven will help you but while that is happening you are paying the doctor his salary somewhere is that true I see many things in my life I cannot do for myself and I'm shocked how much I pay for it and I'm surprised and almost um, sad that I will continue to pay for it why do you pay someone in a restaurant you don't have the knowledge or the time to cook so the one who can do the cooking collects the money is that true away with this anger at people there are some of us who watch our loved ones do this resentment for people there are people who see men of god with crowds god has honored them and they are angry so 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 man of god so 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 church it's not all about the crowd do you think people are idiots a man can be stupid but a crowd cannot be stupid are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says where the carcasses are there the eagle will gather eagles are wise people don't just sit down and commit their time to hear nonsense no value discover and develop problem solving abilities write it down discover and develop problem solving abilities every one of us here will succeed to the degree to which we train and build and many times receive the ability to solve problems i am passionate the day i discovered this i made up my mind i would never harass god over my my destiny again because i knew that it was in my hands if nobody is looking for you as a music artist it's a sign that you are not solving problems or you have not made it known i will share other laws if this guy raises a song now it is because that song is ministering to people he never sleeps he never slumbers who is that he solved your problem the song didn't make meaning to you till the day you saw f the song didn't make meaning till three days to your wedding and you still needed 1.2 million 
all of a sudden you didn't need to hear Kirk Franklin. You took Don Juan. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. And all of a sudden, you now found out that, ah, this is why this man is blessed. You, that you don't need it now does not mean another person does not need it. What a time we live in where there is a need for everything. Everything, good or bad, there is a need. Of course, we are believers, you don't do bad things. But I'm saying, every good and perfect gift has a need on earth. Value. Value. Everything that constitutes an advantage in your life is a bailout system to get out of mediocrity, get out of failure. There are people like Bishop T.D. Jakes. Uh, I was listening to one of his messages and he says there was a woman who made millions simply because of her fingers. Someone saw her fingers and started spotting the rings. The rings of their designer, the rings that they make. And I mean millions. Everything God gave you is an advantage. Esther got to the throne not just because she was bright. She proved that she was bright later on. Her beauty took her to the throne. It's an advantage. Samson could kill the lion. And all of that is an advantage. Everything in your life. Do not allow men, especially church people, to destroy your gift. Now you must be guided to use it. Especially sensitive gifts. There are gifts that are very sensitive. And if not guided, you will lose your work with God just to get money. However, there is nothing God gave you. That is for waste. Are we together now? Thank you. Your destiny is at the mercy of the discovery and the development of your problem solving abilities. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and I guarantee you, you will never be ignored. At best, you will be criticized by ignorant people and those who are intimidated by you and what you represent but not to be ignored be a master at solving something you must solve a problem don't sit down and roam around getting angry and hoping one day one day it go better that's a wise saying that has never worked for anybody the best way to predict your future is to create it don't sit down and wish and hope and wait you stand up and create it there are people who see men of God and the privilege of the blessings that he has brought, the influence, the prosperity and all of that, and people get angry. You know, people just look at a man of God and say, if a man of God is preaching the gospel, and then you are this blessed, you see, if you are ignorant, just keep it to yourself so that it's easy for God to help. When you spread it, you implicate yourself the more. The Bible says, even a fool, when he's silent, is regarded well. There is no man of God who is blessed because he's preaching. Every man of God is blessed because he's providing supernatural solutions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are spiritual in their context, but they are supernatural. Now, you see, God's reward system is such that whether you sell your value or give it free, for as long as there is a dispensing of value, you must be rewarded. That's why a preacher will not charge you for anything. Yet God will reward him. I will never beg for bread. It's not pride. It's the truth. Because for as long as there is one sinner to be saved. For as long as there is one sick body to be healed. For as long as there is one mind to be transformed. For as long as there is one person desire of, us, of an encounter. I remain valuable. That's why the Bible says when you see darkness covering the earth. Rejoice. Your light has come. It's time for you to shine. The presence of darkness is proof that you are an endangered species. And nobody will push you out like that. Say I am valuable. Shout it I am valuable. Say in the name of Jesus. From today. I take responsibility. And I create a desirable future. By solving problems. Every job advertisement. Is a declaration of need by that company. We need a secretary. What they are trying to tell you is that. We have seen a deficiency in our services. We need to outsource intelligence. Whoever can qualify for that. 
receives the job is that true you must be valuable let me give you a key master one thing first you see this issue of deception i am highly multi-talented which of them has brought bread to your table i'm not i don't argue that there are many arrogant people moving around saying i'm multi-talented say what can you do you say it depends on what you want i can do everything growing up i found out i can sing i can do this you see people what do you do you say anything you sell water excellently i mean i mean i are you in real estate yes i am are you in this i am i make hair too i can cook you know you see a restaurant one side is carpentry one side they are selling food another side they are selling drugs and selling gin and selling all kinds of things you must be specific your value brands you it helps everybody know when to need you there is nobody you see who does only what they are known for but like the door to a house every house has what you call a master door everybody say a master door it is the master door that gives you access to other doors if the master door is closed you cannot access the door to the kitchen you can't access the door to the toilet so there are other potentials but there is one that will bring you to notoriety are we together now learn this don't just tell people i can do everything and then it means i don't need you I don't need you if i want to sing i need the worship team if our sound is bad it's yours begging the technical help us if we need order we need the protocol department if we need media capture and then following with our social media platforms we need the media department any department we don't need has not been created in this ministry the day the need arises we create it just like you you roam around and there's nothing to draw men to you when jesus showed up the bible says in the book of mark one two three when you read he said all men seek for thee all men seek for thee they don't seek you just because they love you the world is full of people who also want to achieve their goals whoever is valuable becomes the center of attraction miles munro dr miles munro gave us a very beautiful analogy and this is how he put it he said during um now let me use it in our context nigerians when it is rainy season everybody starts looking at a mango tree happy and expectant the same mango tree you will sit under and gist for hours and argue and not even know the color and look at everything but the moment it is rainy season and the mango fruit start coming out are we together people come and they can climb trees and do everything you know i had to cut the mango tree at my place because in the night there were all kinds of things you would hear someone walking literally just climb the tree and trying to catch the ones that were trapped you know and all of that early in the morning five o'clock god is my witness you hear people running once it rains or wind shakes the place in like 10 minutes somebody's around with pocket fighting and i said no i can't continue so i took away that value from that environment and naturally the people went somewhere else listen this is how nations attract attention they come up with policies that create problems then when it creates problems you come and meet them and say i thought i told you let's negotiate and you refused now there is a problem and you need us here are the terms may you be so valuable that no price pays on you becomes too much that you are so valuable be as valuable as oil look at oil during scarcity when you want to put fuel gas you are on the queue it is your money yet you are still begging somebody helps you to pass and you say thank you sir yet you paid that's called value that you are so valuable that people bless you and call it a privilege are we together now I aspire as a person to be so valuable to the body serving the purposes of the kingdom within the the dimension of the grace and calling he has given me that no level of physical and spiritual reward it is my desire that nobody will ever bless me one day thinking he did me a favor value value somebody sowed a seed into my life one time and 
in two days something dramatic happened in his life and he called me say apostle i have another one i said that's it it's not that i need the seed but i said you see that nobody leaves what works human beings are not stupid when people change for, from um, they change formulas and all of that is because it's not working the day you shake hands with somebody how are you sir and he says good morning and from that day people come and queue in his shop the day you are passing say bros come now i have free yogurt for you because he has identified like um obededom that something was introduced to his environment that brought him an advantage the law of value i learned this law it changed my life by the privilege of god's grace this is what is helping us as a ministry the more valuable we become to the purposes of god the agenda of god and the needs of men the more we continue to rise a day will come when we will wave the flags of nations tens and hundreds of nations why because our value would have extended to those territories they will come yes they will come for as long as there is sickness in the world they will come for as long as there is oppression they will come people flow from the realm of ignorance to where there is knowledge pray one prayer as we continue lord whatever has made men ignore me whatever has made my helpers ignore me i receive grace to work on myself don't just blame the devil and keep insulting people my father didn't do this my mother didn't do this outside inside online pray make me valuable make me valuable so valuable in the area of designs make me valuable as a tailor let me not be a tailor that is when every other professional tailor rejects then they come to me as a caterer let me be so exceptional as a businessman let me be so exceptional as a student let me be so exceptional let my education center let my school be so exceptional that men will want to come there to identify with it let the anointing on my life be so exceptional that gentiles will run to that light and their kings to the brightness of my rising lord let me have something to give my generation i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of competition pray i'm tired of hating people and blaming people there is something you have put within my spirit that can give me a place among the great there is a place you have put upon my spirit that can compel the loyalty of my helpers give me grace to be valuable grace to be valuable hallelujah are you learning something never forget this your reward is tied to your value your reward listen we were not designed to live off miracles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and god is stepping supernaturally we were designed to live by principles principles a miracle is god's intervention but you cannot you can get miracle money but you don't you don't live with miracle money you live with principles you can get the act of God's mercy step into your life in a season. But if you want to be great, it has to be by laws. Are you getting blessed? The Lord is leading us. He's helping us. You may look weak now, but take what I'm saying seriously and watch your life grows. Follow these laws and you watch your desires follow you. Like the animals came helplessly to the ark of Noah. You may not believe me, but believe the truth I'm teaching. Hallelujah. The third law that I want to teach you, connecting with the second law now, wherever we can stop tonight, there's a lot to cover, is the law of competence and excellence. The law of value talks of recognition of what you have. But the law of excellence, competence, and excellence the fourth law 
that governs God's success systems. Please listen carefully. Proverbs 22, 29. Please give it to us media very fast. The law of competence. Everybody say competence. Say excellence. One more time. Say competence. Say excellence. Now if you're a believer, read that scripture projected. Let's read together. One, two, read. Seest thou a man, uh -huh, diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. No specific person. No specific person. Seest thou a man, not the man, any man. Any man who chooses to assume this posture of diligence that produces competence produces excellence remember we define terminologies excellence is maintaining this is the highest producing the highest quality at your level excellence producing the highest quality at your level excellence means to surpass ordinary standards I read a book years ago called The Enemy, An Enemy Called Average by John Mason. I think that was 2005 or so. And that book changed my life forever. Because you see, many of us, especially Africans, were born in this lifestyle of mediocrity. And when we give our lives to Christ, sometimes if not correctly taught, we think that what we have come into is a license and an excuse for mediocrity. Mediocrity means living in a common realm. Having no passion for surpassing the ordinary. There is nothing mediocre that eventually becomes great. It may not be bad, but it will not bring you to greatness. The law of competence. Write this down competence and excellence are magnets competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources we're on our way to better days. You see us sing this song. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a special number. It's the truth. We're on our way to better days. Have you learned to use that magnet called excellence? Discovering your potentials. Obeying the law of value. Is a good start but in itself will not activate success systems in your life it is value that is excellently dispensed value that is communicated with competence what is competence thoroughness predictability of results there are many anointed people who are not competent competence in anything there are business people who are not competent there are students who are not competent there are workers who are not competent your certificate gives you a job your competence promotes you your certificate gives you a job and that's where it stops it is competence that promotes you every time a company is about to be downsized who do you think are the ones that they send away the ones that the company perceives to be less valuable in terms of competence discovery is important but development qualifies you to sit with the great discovery is important but development refining is what qualifies you to sit with the great you don't sit at the seat of greatness simply because you discovered your potentials that is important but alongside the law of value knowing your difference is not alone enough building your difference to a point that is worthy of reward is what we are talking about um 
someone was over i think he was the head of department um media he was over at my place and um you know he was served a very sumptuous very very sumptuous meal and you know i was just watching him serving himself and helping himself adding this adding that adding chicken adding fish adding this and i was watching him and then i told him i said if this were a restaurant how much will you pay and then he looked i i, I was just reminiscing on my teaching tonight listen please help me with this how much is this 20 naira let's say 100 naira let's use a round figure this is 100 naira will you pay 1000 naira for this i'm not talking of free will donation will you go to a shop and pay 1000 why what will you say if i sell this 1000 to you it's too much because you feel that this is valuable but not to that degree is that true if your school fees is 30000 you may not complain even if you complain you may just pay it there is no school that has if you go take your child to a school and they tell you that school is 100 naira will you admit your child there I know you are crying recession but you carry your heart and child except if you just got somebody from the street but you took your child how much is the school fees and you're about bringing out your checkbook and, no 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 sir it's 100 naira 100 naira for what for the entire three three um, um what they call them three terms first term second term third time say that's how we are in this school automatically you already know what is going to happen to the destiny of your child There are times that the prices of things are high but we are happy paying for them because we know that there has been development to a level that will commensurately pay you is that true yes competence reject mediocrity write it down i reject mediocrity you have to write it personalize it don't say we reject this is not a corporate thing you must reject it personally there are many believers who are not competent. Apostle, I make hair. Pray for my, my, um, my, what, what they call, my salon. Someone comes to your salon, you burn their hair. You charge high. You finish late. You are frowning. Heat is killing them there. And close to, close to the, um, the television is one bottle of anointing oil there very dirty dusty around dirty place the gutter is smelling there's a bottle of minerals close to that gutter and you say please pay 100 naira for it and the person says what what is your idea of me just because i came to spend three hours to make my hair praise god people have traveled from region to region to go somewhere and be able to buy certain things because they are looking for quality let me tell you not everyone is afraid of quality there are people who have conquered price what they are looking for is quality did you hear what i said yes oh but if i put quality everybody around my area cannot pay for it you don't need everybody one person can equal 200 mediocres one person who likes you pastor david biome was sharing and saying that he noticed that the, those who sold his clothes they will collect measurement of 11 and so 13 he said they, they will never return back to him again but then one they would sew three clothes the same measurement one will look as if you know and then the other one he said what sort of people are you you are not competent and some of them were members of his church he said no i love you but i can't use you then he found somebody who charged twice the price and he looked at the person and he said why are you charging twice the price and the person says sir i know what i can deliver according to him and he says okay i'm impressed let me give you a trial he said when he came back with that clothes david biome said that's it you are the one who will sow my traditionals now one david biome is what some cities i think i like that kind of business why labor to get two 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 naira from everybody when i can get one million from one loyal person Don't allow environment make you compromise on quality. Because impressions, impressions, impressions are important. 
you give a negative impression about your shop the day you change people will still think you are like yesterday you now went for a three months tailoring school and now you have become a pro tailor but everybody looks at you and says don't waste your time going to that woman do you know god is my witness i once saw a wedding cloth ejimi wedding a lady's wedding gown i never would believe they sold that thing in nigeria i thought it was maybe you know london school of tailoring or one of these um gucci or versace and all of that and they told me a, the tailor made a tailor in the north here I mean with with a level of precision now those people are not noise makers you may not see them on Facebook but they are the types if you call them they don't even pick your call if you are ready to spend 500,000 on a wedding gown get to them in a year they, they sold for 100 people only they are building estates and other people are there saying say it depends on your level which type if you want for 10,000 I can sell and then a night to the wedding that's when they bring it and it's raining you can't wash it they bring a white wedding gown that is smelling fabric is bad is torn they say you know they, you didn't finish paying myself you you spoil another person's wedding simply because of incompetence and he said please if you know any other person bring no no nobody does that listen excellence is self-marketing excellence is self-marketing being excellent to one person is the same as attracting hundred people the money you will use to attract hundred people can be saved in creating an excellent outcome everybody say excellence look at me there are many of us right now what you are writing on what you are writing on is a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly that is a piece of paper is an issue but the discipline to just tear it and create synergy you don't have that patience you just tear everything and you are writing something that will change your destiny you're not excellent you see excellence is a culture it starts from your life you don't try to pretend it outside you eat you don't wash the plate you are not excellent you wash the plate you don't throw away the dirty water you are not excellent you use the same soap to bath, wash, clean, mop, or the same rag, your sponge case for your shoe, you are not excellent. Are we together? Don't laugh at anybody. God is speaking to you. You enter to bath like I was teaching school of ministry students. Some of you bath in one minute. You, they ask you a question. You are answering it while you are bathing. You will think you are flushing the toilet. You just say, Shah, and you are out. No, you are not excellent. Sir, you are not excellent. Are we together? Wearing one boxer for two weeks, you are not excellent. Wearing one torn singlet, smelling it to see if it's still usable, you are not excellent. Ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent. Are we together? You are laughing. Ask those who this thing has cost them so much. Do you know just there are people someone like me i eat emotionally before my mouth touches it presentation matters as much as what it is you don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body no why did god give me eyes <laughs> are we together now you have a restaurant i carry your spoon somebody took gary with the spoon and you obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace why should i remain there let's tell ourselves the truth tonight success systems there's oil all around they have to call you madam come and clean this table now you just send one lady who frowns around comes out as if everybody has offended her just pushes the rag across the table <laughs> pours the water on you and goes madam give me rice beans towel and one other part she goes to go and bring swallow no attention to details after 20 or i'm showing us little things no attention to details i 
iron someone's cloth, you go and burn the cloth. You don't know how much the cloth is. I say, sir, uh, I, I decided, I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um, doing dry cleaning with him and so he said he wanted to do something. I said, okay, let me try you. I gave him a suit. He returned it after like one month. I don't know what he did on it. I said, thank you. I gave it to somebody and I knew that. Even him, he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever. Let's stop saying God is not looking down on us. I'm showing you how God comes but we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems. One day, I will cook for the governor. Who are you? With what you are doing now? You are not training yourself. The governor is not an idiot. The government house is not a zoo. If you want to cook well, you must be competent. Don't throw anything at anybody. Are we together now? How about Babas? How about Babas? How about Babas? There are people who pay as much as four, five thousand just to bob their hair. You think they are lavishing money. They are not ready to risk their hair. Are we together? You bring out a clipper. You don't even know whether it's sharp or not. You injure someone all around because you are bobbing. Don't, don't laugh. These are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent. It's not just shell. It's not just oil and gas. It's a determination to be thorough. Pay attention to details. Listen to the instructions. No assumption. You met somebody. God is introducing a great businessman to you. About to take a risk with you. He says, call me by 2 p.m. tomorrow. It's by 1.30 you sleep. Are you a serious person? You get up and start ringing his phone by 4. I say, no, you have to pray. Apostle, this guy is not picking my, my call. Why should he pick your call? Maybe that guy is in church for evening service. Maybe he's a deacon. You are ringing by 7. You are ringing his number. He told you, call me by 2. Someone tells you, I want to give you a job. I want to help you. Come by 2. You stroll carelessly by 2.30 and say, Uncle, just to let you know I'm around. You know, you won't get the job. Because some jobs, are the, the lives of people are dependent on it. Excellence. You have one shoe, you polish it, you comb your hair well, don't dress around like a thief going to the house of God. You look smart. Say, I'm not, I'm not a man of God. It doesn't mean you should be like that. You are smart. It's not about having money. Excellence. Your notebooks, you bind them well. If they are torn, you fix them. You fix your Bible. Are we together now? Your environment is neat. Very neat. We come into your kitchen, we see it neat. We come into your toilet, we see it neat. We come into the living room, we see it neat. That's excellence. Don't say we were not trained that way. That's why God is bringing you. Koinonia is a school and you are learning. Are we together? Is God helping us? The law of competence. How to be competent? Quickly. Now that I've challenged you on mediocrity. How do I become competent? Number one. You must have a reference. You cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference. A reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration. There must be someone, even if you plan to surpass that level, there must be a reference. Oh, I want to become a great worship minister. I have a reference like Don Moen. Now, that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder. When you become like Don Moen, you now earn the right to go higher. But not when you are down. I want to be great. Like who? I'm unique. Oh, yes, you are unique. But you need a reference. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts. That means someone walked in it before you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You must have a reference. Look at me. Hold on, Mike. If you do not have a reference for ministry, for business, you want to become a great man of God. Like who? Who represents a model? Because that's the life you are going to understudy. That's going to be your case study. 
I want to become a business mogul. Like who? You just mentioned one hilarious name. How many videos of that person do you have? Have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person? No. Competence and excellence is based on a reference. I always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose whose um whose who reflect their aspiration so every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration references are important because we draw inspiration from them if your reference is small your outcomes will be small you see when your references are people of mediocrity you will hit it too fast even when you don't do much and so you will not aspire to rise number two how to be competent submit yourself to mentorship now that you have references i told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful trust me when i say this mentorship is not listening to a man mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles and the secrets of a man submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets I take it again the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets of a man that's what you do when you are when you are receiving mentorship it's not just to go and package yourself for nothing no you sit down why is this person getting these results what is he doing that I'm not doing why does Benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying is it that God is unfair to me God you called me to have the healing anointing but what is it about what's the difference between me and Benny Hinn then you study his prayer life you may never have that close access to him so you take advantage of his materials you know a lot of people call me and say sir I want you to mentor me can I be calling you anytime I say no he says, sir, so how do you mentor me? I said, that's why I'm teaching. I'm teaching all the time. There's Koinonia Radio. Our teachings are free. Listen, they say I have it. I said, that's why you will never learn. Mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a TV program. I've shared with a school of ministry students. There are times it takes me three days to watch a one-hour video. Three days to watch a one-hour video. Because almost every two, two minutes I'm stopping. This man said this. I have to listen. That's mentorship. You submit yourself to read between the lines. Ah, he just said the power of God will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting. How did he know? Was that the word of knowledge? Man, this guy is powerful. That's excitement. That's not mentorship. There are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets. I was told, I don't know if it's true or not, but I was told one great man of God, Bishop um, Abioye, that one time one man said he wanted to, you know, find out the secret of his prayer life and he said fine let's pray and that they prayed after a long time the guy was yawning he wanted to sleep and then bishop abio told him okay we've given thanks now let's pray and the guy was almost died <laughs> if that story is true that guy is not wise what do you think the anointing is you think the anointing is a charm even a charm go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down not give him miracles just push a man against gravity the secret of great men is in their stories pay attention when a great man is giving you examples pay attention when a great man is giving you stories they are trying to bring a principle many people laugh at the stories parables and mysteries enshrined in stories you can see the stories and laugh and be raptured by the humor of the communication and miss out on the meaning of it i'm not against laughing be happy 
but you must be able to see when others are looking are we together submit yourself to mentorship number three understand believe and live by the principles learned how to be competent one you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship three understand believe and live by the principles learned it's not enough to just say i know he told me this understand what you are being taught believe what you have been taught let me tell you something i have discovered something with the body of christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they have been told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete. You are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing. I say, no, I don't. Just because he made a mistake with one Greek word, he said, no, I have the, the modern lexicon. Or okay? God, who, who did you get out of a wheelchair? Whose eye opened? That's the summary of this thing we are talking about. Whose eye opened? Whose life changed? You prophesied on somebody, everything was wrong. Sit down sit down don't just say the person does not have faith you are you are, you are you are messing up if it's not working it's not working sit down when i see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life even if i don't exactly understand what they are saying i sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate maybe a businessman a smart businessman who is let's say um, he's somebody who is not very he just used street sense but in that street sense he kept acquiring principles now he may be sharing business secrets he may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to harvard business school will but you can discern the spirit of his communication not to sit down and say Kai, this carpenter now wow but he's the number one carpenter do you know why rich people are coming to him maybe the man every two two months he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend that may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coughing and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle Years ago, I was in Abuja and I took a cab. When I took a cab, we were discussing with the driver because sometimes I crack jokes with them. Say, ah, oh God, you poor are enjoying this. Ah, my chama and Abba, I'm not enjoying. And then it, we we're talking about money. And then later the man said, oh God, you know, say this money, eh? That the thing has a spirit. And then I started listening to him. He said, do you know that he tried to build a house in Abuja? He tried and tried, could not build. But he said he saved and took the money out of Abuja and in four months he built. I discerned something that guy was saying. He was communicating a deep mystery. But because of his, the barrier in communication. Are we together now? Listen. If you don't have results in your life, you are not a colleague to the person who has results. Sit down. Humble yourself. Believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb, I was anointing my womb with oil. Now, he's not saying you should repeat the anointing. Discern the mystery of what she was saying. She may now tell you that I took one night vigil for all my children before they were born. You are now learning secrets. You apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child. No matter what the limitations are. Listen, one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation. Don't wait for a great man to tell you everything. There are people who look and say, ah, is this all? There are people who have never seen 
but observe you observe when the power of god is about to come how does he behave observation observation jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the cloud and through observation know that it is rainy season you can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is god helping us <laughs> you know look at this let me tell you this if you're a businessman listen twice to what i'm teaching you and everybody's in business i hope you know business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward it's not wearing suits and sitting in business class business is solving a problem for an agreed reward simple most men think men of god don't know anything about business you know when they look at men of god they just feel we're just daft people you are praying and fasting you don't know anything see see still this pride we are talking about what do you think managing people is what do you think managing resources are what do you think multiplying them is are we together now the law of the mind number what number four am i right five thank you number one hey, i'm the one teaching listen number one is the law of relationships am i right number two the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence oh that's true how to be competent is part of it number four the law of the mind jesus the law of the mind number four the law of the mind proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 is god helping us as i teach you you should be seeing the loopholes what laws you are not keeping that is deactivating the systems of success in your life 23 verse 7 proverbs for as he thinketh in his heart it's interchange with the word mind so is he not so he will be as you are thinking you already are the bible creates your um references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind the bible says in proverbs 4 23 guard your heart proverbs 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence it says for from out of it are the issues of life guard it it is a guard your head it is a guard your legs guard your heart you don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you don't protect your mind you will fail in life listen being filled with the holy spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind the law of the mind what does it state as it is in your mind so it will be in your life as it is in your mind so it will be in your life trust me 
your physical reality is a messless reflection of the summation of your understanding your thought patterns as it is in your mind so it will be in your life A great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about God about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that I want all of us. We've had several teachings here on the mind. But it's important for you to understand the mind. My life changed. This law alone changed me like day and night. The law of the mind. That my, the quality of my life today is a reflection of my mind. Your mind is a miracle. Your mind is a gold mine. It literally is. Literally is. Literally is. Write this down. Your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden. Your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden. Full stop. Write it down. Your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden. It will grow any seed planted and watered. It will grow any seed that is planted and watered. In our Greek science, they teach that there are several kinds of soils. I don't know if they've discovered others, but as far as I remember, they taught loamy soil, clay soil, what other one, sandy soil, and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them. Your mind is, in, is a perfect garden sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding your excellence your relationships everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm it's an uncomfortable truth many people will not want to admit but it's true apostle nothing is working no friends in my life no favor in my life there is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind there's only wrong seeds planted in the mind and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you Standing here only because Sing it one more time. You made a way, made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked to sing it was over. You made a way, and I'm standing.
greatest miracle that can happen to you outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist i don't know his name who had a, a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is worth crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if i give you one billion and i make you mad have i blessed you please talk to me yes there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as i'm talking now you're like, oh mind bring another thing now look you will never be great i'm sharing you with you the principles that i have lived by you have seen the anointing and the grace of god upon my life i'm showing you the other sides to these success systems because many people just think oh these people are just privileged no sir these are systems they make your life and your outcome predictable You never truly rise above your mindset. You never truly rise. Underline the word truly. You never truly rise above your mindset. You may jump above it for a while, but I assure you, you will never truly rise. Your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset, no matter how you manipulate it. Your mindset is what shows the quality of your life i wrote down something here i want you to listen to i don't know if you can have the speed to write it but listen first if you attempt to change your life without changing your mind your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind you know how you pull a rubber ring you can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that the moment you push it what happens it returns back that's how many people are if you attempt to change your life change your shoe <laughs> change your suit change your hair change watch change cars and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful you attempt to change them first without changing your mind your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people will think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months Hollandis that you spent money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life i've had the privilege by the grace of god to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir i have an idea i have this if you only give me this money i will never return back and i look at them and i say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and i'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake you think all you need is hundred thousand two hundred thousand if it left you it is not your hand that took it away it's your mind that took it away so you must correct something in your mind first before having it back are we together now 
the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless I have seen great people rise and then pay attention to rise first in the mind I've seen people inherit money I've seen people win lottery millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive it's not if you will have accident it's when are we together now you can manage to navigate your way driving nonsense and arrive safely and then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel that's the day you die you see that and you can die the death of a fool listen packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration write it Nigerians packaging without mental upgrade will lead to I was almost saying like lead to Nigeria will lead to frustration packaging you know what we call packaging paying attention to the physical form now it is important appearance is important appearance is the seed for acceptance so don't don't ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe oh that great man is wearing Versace is wearing Gucci wearing Louis Vuitton and me too I want to get all these designers I want to and then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money and then buy the shoe buy the hair buy everything so physically you look let me tell you something a great man and a great name are not the same if your name is greater than you you are in trouble you must rise to get to the level of your name i will make your name great does not mean you are great it's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you god makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up are we blessed the law of the mind there's too much packaging packaging i know people who years ago as students were behaving like bankers a student will buy a suit of forty thousand. A student will not cook. No, 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 no. I don't have that time. I don't. Uh, I don't like okra soup. Do you have that option? No. Whoever pays creates the rules. You cannot. Somebody cannot pay and you say I don't like okra. There are people who try to live a life. You have not built your mind. There are so many people holding briefcases today. Arrogant people. You see them, they move around wearing suits, loitering our streets. You ask them, what do we do? Say, it depends on which, which company. I have five companies. Uh, I'm the CEO of this. What do you do? Well, we are into logistics. What do you mean logistics? Logistics is like saying, I'm studying science. What do you do? I'm into real, real estate. What do you know about real estate? Well, my uncle gave me one land to sell. You are not into real estate. Yet. Are we together now? I am this, I'm into that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of, in fact, by the grace of God, it's just that I don't want to talk too loud. I'm one of the top fashion people in this, this town. Who knows you? Who has patronized you? We make too much noise, whereas our results cannot match it. 
it is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise i can cook for one thousand people just give me this money i know what i'm saying is it cooking what is there in cooking then the food is smelling smoke all around burnt the meat burnt the food burnt everything packaging is good but have content have content build your mind buy the truth buy books buy materials i can spend the whole night teaching on the mind focus on changing your mind brothers and sisters and i promise you your life will change don't don't get into this pressure of living a fake life if all you have today is Gary, take it with honor. Use your 2,000 naira, buy a Bible, buy a book, read, pay for seminars. You are buying the truth. You are investing your destiny. Yes, I know you have one trouser. The trouser is torn around. Sew it with honor. Let them laugh at you. A day will come you will own a clothing line. All these things somebody just finished is a graduate. You are moving around. When you are going somewhere, you go and change 10,000 naira. Um, you have 20,000 savings. You change 20,000 to 500 naira, new note. And you just go and dash people and say, well, this is part of what God has done now. You take, look at the fake life. Social media has helped us to live very fake lives. Now there are positive aspects of it. People snap near cars that are not their own. They stand near a plane and snap. They do all kinds. So you don't even know. It's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise. There is a way you live a life that is too fake. You don't even know that it's fake again. Are we together? You go to a house that is not near your house. Stand in front of the gate. Just put one leg and snap. And then you go around. Now, let me tell you what. You, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together yes packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration there are many pastors i love them i love the body of christ but you see a lot of people this guy will wear suit you think if you match the ground every wheelchair will stand up wear the suit wear tie wear all kinds of things pocket square all kinds of things bible ipad another book one protocol one for whoever it is that is standing by the side and you hold the mic one scripture you can quote one prayer you can pray man of god i don't know what to do about my finances as well god will attend to your needs look at the answer he's giving no knowledge of the principles of the kingdom yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you too you enter there Number one, you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people. The, see, with every lifting, life teaches you the protocol of that realm. 
when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade eh? money is not coming say really oh yeah bring your account two million god is trying to teach him how to trust you destroy that lecture you gave the guy two million. Do you know what he's going to say? He will arrow. He was begging you, crying, but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say, "If you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head, go and check my bank account." Now that guy has not learned anything. Most people will use your help to prove that they had faith. They didn't know you helped them. Me, I don't pray. I don't pray. Things just happen in my life. I'm, I'm like that. I mean, all this. I don't waste my time praying because you, somebody's. You have been reaping somebody's seed. The day your farm will be open, you will see that uh, what they call that thing, shifting cultivation, that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush following what they call all those agri terminologies. You have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time. Corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals. Because you won't know who is really producing the result. See, they, let, let, me, let me encourage you, everyone, especially the workers in this ministry. We share our success. Now, I've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion. If somebody says today, Apostle, you are very anointed, we share it. I'm not anointed alone. There were people who made that possible. However, be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward. Are you moving forward? That's the danger with things like group work. Ten people can do an assignment. Only two are serious. The remaining two will sleep. All of them will get nine over ten. And the other person will come and say, Kai, God is faithful. You are not smart. You are not learning. In the office, they give assignments. And they come and give everybody bonuses. And you are rejoicing, yet you are not growing. Enjoy corporate success. But vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor. That your input is in that equation of success. How is the mind renewed? Quickly. If this is what we can take, then we'll just stop here. How is the mind renewed? We need to learn how to transform the mind. Number one. A recognition. Transformation starts with a recognition that your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where i am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information you can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way
there is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listening to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces on common leadership and i mean it on common leadership you no know, sometimes when I sit down and read these books or watch these people, I sit down and I try to say, my God, what constructed their understanding to be this flawless? Access to new ideas. Number three, repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established. The third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas, but those ideas must be repeated until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i lie not the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right Generally speaking, there are two dimensions to the mind. There is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind. The conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses, your physical senses. That's where you do your thinking. That's where you do your reasoning. That's where you do your analysis. Unfortunately, that's not where your behavior comes from. That's not where your convictions come from. That's where your intention comes from. The conscious part of your mind. Then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered a people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 genesis 11 and verse 5 the bible says that god said there were, he came down to see and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded hold on they had not started building they were mobilizing themselves but the bible says god came down to see the city that has already been built once you build it in your mind you build it in your life so says god himself verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language and this they begin to do listen and now nothing everybody say nothing who is talking here god nothing will be restrained from them not which they intended which they imagined it first happens in your mind i saw these days years ago the mental level i am now the physical reality is not yet the reflection tomorrow will tell you my thought process what you are we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking are you hearing what i'm saying now your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother it's a reflection of the ideas your life now it's a reflection of your ideas listen the subconscious mind there's something very powerful about it the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination wow it cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real in the world of your subconscious mind whether you are looking at this 
or imagining it it interprets it as real that's why the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 thank you jesus finally brethren in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern he said whatsoever things are what true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise what's the assignment don't just pray think on these things think on these things think on these things think on these things brothers and sisters i think on many things when i look at you i think of how you will be not how you are now no that's why there's nobody i look at and conclude over no no matter how you are when i look at you my eyes are seeing your today but my spirit my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today and i've already seen when the nations will come and worship ah. our hearts our prayer is to see the nations worship our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that we'd want mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires to see the nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see I see pain in my family I see divorce I see the fact that I've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that hallelujah are we together pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision i have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and i'm programming my life wrongly pray pray will soon stop but i want you to get this law it's important what you see your perception he looked at a weak man Gideon and he said I see a mighty man of value brothers and sisters since I was nothing and I didn't have anything I saw a great destiny that's what I see I know what I see in the glory and the power I see miracles, that's my life. I'm a sign and wonder. It's in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders.
tell you something do you know years ago years ago i would go to our boys quarters in the night alone i never knew my mother was watching me i would get a stick and i was seeing these days i was preaching i would stand i would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of jesus rise up from the wheelchair that's what i was doing and i would feel the anointing because you see your the holy spirit works through your mind i told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not job said the thing i feared most came upon me i thought about it accident accident until a car killed me all i see is a great destiny that's what i see for myself all i see is koinonia rising from glory to glory i never see bomb blast i never see trouble i see myself as a leader over men of influence i have never seen impossibility in my life and i'm not just i'm not joking i said this when i could not buy a shoe it's seen the glory and the power i see miracles signs and wonders i'm in the glory and the power i'm a living miracle and a sign and wonder Listen. you must stop looking down on yourself many of you say why do the hiddens rage and the people imagine a vain thing that's why they execute it you imagine the vain thing you imagine failure i am nothing i graduated with third class can anything good come out of nazareth i can't speak well i am too old oh come on now oh come on now we're talking about the god of heaven the one who can change people listen listen someone asked me one day and said apostle god has blessed you so much with gifted people how do you get them and i told him i see them i see a service conducted by music ministers who as individuals are international figures you have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind there are ladies here whereas there is esther in you vashti is calling you your destiny is calling you but your yesterday is pulling you back remember you failed you failed jam five times what is the definition of a failure then you submit to it the moment you submit to it you destroy yourself listen every great man is a man who changed his mind literally right from the time i was having bread bread i will i will cut the bread and put granite in the middle i knew that a day will come i will feed nations ask a jimmy we had a song ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that was our song that's the cry of my heart this ten shores and the islands will sing your God as it rises on earth. Yeah. As can now give the nations to you, oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will sing your love. before god gave me access to the heart of kings i saw myself i knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings i found it from scripture and i said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny the holy spirit is crippled if your 
your mind says yes no demon can say no believe me hallelujah listen the lord gave me a very great testimony i think it was day before yesterday or yesterday something happened and um, it's something i had seen in my spirit i had seen in my mind and i would not see it physically and then the lord gave me a very big miracle when it manifested and i looked at it it was exactly what i had seen in the spirit and i said this god believe him did you hear what i said i'm going to teach you the law of faith i thought we would have more time there are many laws to teach you brothers and sisters when you activate these things by next week when we are done i'm going to spend the night before next week praying all the oils that will be used i will lie down and pray on it when we are done that oil as it comes on your head you will activate systems my my listen my brother my sister it will shock you this life you see this life you see is a living miracle is a product of understanding this is what dominion is it's not guesswork i saw myself walking in the anointing i saw it i saw shadows killing the sick i saw it it's not some vain nonsense imagination i believe it the only audience in my vision yet i pulled it down and it will cause nations to see it you are the first to live in your future and then i speak it lord it will happen i will stand before kings they will come gentiles i saw a ministry that was zero zero death zero death owing no man nothing as a ministry dead or alive i saw it where did the money come from your mind there is nobody giving any guarantee anywhere there are people frowning my uncle didn't give me ten naira. nobody's uncle promises him anything leave all those dependence careless dependence everything comes from above it comes through men not from men from god through men to you men are not your source they are channels it comes from god we are going to pray is someone angry are you seeing how you have authorized i've only taught you four laws some of you have missed it in relationships some of you have missed it your gift is not speaking some of you mediocrity just these four laws alone are enough to open your destiny see god instructed me to teach you this series because god wants to roll away shame shame he has taken all the pain you've taken all lamentation you've taken all disappointment you've taken all my sorrow you have taken all my sadness you've taken all limitations taking all the pain you've taken all the shame you have made me yours the highest praise to the of your family members would have been had they known these laws they destroyed relationships and it has grounded them some of them the last time they worked was 1997 no door open till today sincere well-meaning believers 
but they have not understood the systems of the kingdom nobody is born with understanding you buy the truth i want you to lift your voice and prophesy i found my way i found my way i found my way i found my way out of misery voice and pray grace grace to engage this laws grace to engage this laws Hallelujah. You know that song, right? That Nathaniel Bassi song. Just sing it once. I want us to sing it. Let the devil know that we're singing.
time is gone but let's just pray for two minutes i want you to forget where you are now forget what you cannot eat now i want you to see a bright future throw from that future and start prophesying i'm coming to you i'm coming to you i'm coming to you say back and forth from the heaven higher no devil stops me in the name of jesus If God can find one person, he, he needs to take it step by step. When he finds you, the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one. And before you know it, someone starts having a strange dream in your family. He lies down and he has a dream of rapture. He won't share it, but that dream would torture him till he thinks about it. He would get up alone. And you find out for the first time he didn't steal money again he saw angels he saw the white throne he doesn't need to know what it is his spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things but tonight you must come genuinely to jesus don't come out here if you are playing games it has let me tell you the implication of coming out here you must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong dangerous and ungodly relationships by the grace and the spirit of god you just need the will the grace is what you receive here number two you must be ready and willing to be committed to the house of god to grow this dilly darling with god is the recipe for failure i'm too young to reject god the fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life i claim i'm too big for god before we continue tonight i'm going to count one to ten listen everyone heard me loud and clear overflow outside overflow along the road as i'm speaking to you the holy ghost is probing you those of you standing on the fence there i see you and the lord is speaking to you online probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world and you are saying but i'm far distance is no barrier it doesn't matter you are still on earth everyone on earth will be judged whether you are in london whether you are wherever i'm going to make this altar call now i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to jesus i know you will be healed young and old i don't care how long you have been you are saying lord i'm tired of living my life the way i want i want to hand it genuinely inside outside start running one to ten one genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain two so keep coming don't say there's no space even if you have to line up outside no problem this is your salvation with god greater than any miracle tonight just find somewhere to stand if the place is full keep lining up there right outside five someone is still thinking about it and saying apostle i'm a nice person have never done anything wrong it's just that i've not declared jesus join them by the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved you didn't do anything wrong but that very nature of darkness is resident upon you 
all of you who are standing here please don't look at anyone lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to jesus everyone who is standing stretch right outside and those online talk to jesus right now and say jesus i come to you i come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated i expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of god lift your voice and cry to jesus lord i'm saved but my father is not saved he's on his way to hellfire and i know it my mother is not saved i know today that if the trumpet sounds they are going to hell for sure i know my sister is not saved my husband is not saved my wife is not saved my colleague in office is not saved lord i know that pastor is not saved he has a church but is not saved pray cry your heart to jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the savior he wants to reveal himself first as savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me i see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old i don't care what you have done i don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you are going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart it says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the Lord wants to give you a new beginning. I know you came to be healed, but he wants to take over your destiny. With your hands lifted to Jesus, who is here, not in heaven, right here in this place. Say after me, passionately and sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I have heard your word and i make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days i will live for you i will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night i hand over my life to you say it again i hand over my life to you be my lord be my savior i declare that the power of sin of satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of god i am separated from them this night i declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today i am a child of god and i will live for him forever hallelujah keep your hands lifted jesus look at the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and today we are glad to present them to you this is why you put this meeting together we lift them up as trophies worthy trophies for your blood worthy trophies for your death and lord i decree and declare that these ones you have brought tonight none will be lost 
I speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today I declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today I declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation we roll it away right now in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven by the message of God I declare that you have a new beginning with God you are empowered by the Spirit to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone I'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what I want you to do um, protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details I know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in God that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please I hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because I'll start praying for the sick now praise the Lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets tuesdays 4 p.m just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down rema chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the holy spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth i don't want you to waste this experience praise the lord i bless you in the name of jesus and shortly the lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah please coordinate them coordinate them let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you hey, i never see anyone like you I never see where's sam help me like i never see anyone like you
everyone stand up let's pray some prayers before let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please say be serious in the name of Jesus father tonight visit me this is my destiny give me strange results lift your voice and begin to pray visit me in the name of Jesus visit me step into my destiny step into my destiny step into my destiny hallelujah in the name of Jesus shout it again in the name of Jesus every long-standing issue in my life and my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long-standing challenges are you praying tonight long standing issue Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold the hand. I want you to agree. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any truth shall agree, as touching, believe in what you are saying, you are opening doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life, my family, and my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Roll away the reproach. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit 
behind the tragedies in my life in my destiny and my family expose them tonight lift your voice and pray for the light shines in darkness pray for the light shines in darkness let your light shine oh God Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like me, Lord, light me, Lord. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing, but listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives come, my dear, when a spirit listen carefully when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny brothers and sisters let me tell you i don't care what you do physically remember spiritual intelligence you can be doing the right physical things but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo representing a covenant an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry 
I prayed over the father's picture. I've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that, but you could look at the leg and see the bone. The bone, the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone. What happened to the man? He went to bed in the night. Brothers and sisters, I think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up. The Bible says the whole world lies in wickedness. You want to move forward but there is an embargo. The solution is not counseling. You need an encounter with power. Everybody say power. Listen, the power of the Holy Spirit is not a negotiator. It's an enforcer. When the power of God comes, it does not ask you whether you want to be free. Your assignment is to be open till it reaches you. When it comes, it scatters anything that does not look like God. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. I will pray for you now. The Spirit of God is upon me. Lift your hands, everyone. There are people here right now. I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out. Usher's grace for you and protocol. I know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road. But I want to pray. Everyone, please lift your hands. The Lord is speaking to me. There are people right now in your silence. Hold on. Maybe just this. The power of God will begin to come upon you. What is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance. That deliverance is equal to breakthrough, equal to new levels. But lift your hands. There are people here who are under strong yokes of delay. And the Lord gives me an instruction. We will just lift our hands and be silent. That's all the instruction. And inside and outside, the Spirit of God will begin to locate them. Are we together? When that happens, then we'll take it off from there. That's the first thing God wants to do tonight. Just lift your hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. And there are people and families and those following on, online. Except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay. That spirit must leave you. Are we together? So keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, wherever they are right now, I stretch my hands. According to the instructions you have given me, inside and outside. Right now, I see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay. Keep your hands lifted. Shalakataya. Bring them out. Outside. There. Just the angels of the Lord are walking. I'm seeing like smoke. Just moving across lines. Line by line. Inside and outside. When it comes to you. When you are under that influence. That's the end of it. Right now. I command it. The word of the Lord is upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus. No instruments. Don't play anything. Outside. There is massive deliverance happening. Separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it Bring them out, young, old, destinies that have been delayed. Tonight there is serious grace for deliverance. Those of you lifting up your hands, be sensitive. Be sensitive. We're in a prophetic atmosphere right now. Bring them. I see people outside. Kai. My God. 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 Many people. Many people. 
many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are two if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken go now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace for open doors right now break every chain in my life Keep your hands lifted. Watch it happen now. That's the instruction God gave me. That grace breaking chains now. I'm speaking across the congregation. I have been seeing this for weeks. But locks opening in the realm of the spirit. That's what the Lord is showing me. But locks opening, opening, opening right now. Open them. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow. Your influence is all over me. fire is coming on 32 people and this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars i hear family altars right now oh god in the name of jesus one two three i set those altars now on fire right now 32 people i see in the realm of the spirit i command it right now i command it everyone on this ground under the influence of any altar now be free now help them please help that lady be free now so right now be free now be free now your influence is all over me i'm under the shadow of your own 
everyone lift your hands say this after me in the name of Jesus please say it seriously say in the name of Jesus any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction hear the word of the Lord as I shout the name Jesus I command you to live my life at the count of three shout Jesus there will be an exiting of many strange spirits one two three shouting I command spirits you go now you go now you go now you go now inside and outside any spirit resident within any man's life any woman's life causing pain help me say hallelujah ushers i pray for grace for you in jesus name because what i see now is not a nice scene the lord is asking me that we shout jesus there are people who are going to vomit physical things that's why i said it's a messy scene I, I apologize we're very neat and organized people inside and outside but in the name of jesus right now any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now one two three i command every stranger go now every poison every devil causing sicknesses every fibroid every devil every enchantment hallelujah the Lord is showing me a vision of a lady if you're here I want you to come out I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice and they are giving somebody everybody a substance like a drink something to take they gave everybody including you and you took it where is that person please if you're here I want you to come out quickly is a is a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody where are you come your deliverance comes now I'm under the shadow of your wings Help me. your influence is all upon me Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this a lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. What happened to you? Hold on. I converted. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? I don't know my mother i don't know they she brought somebody and you people entered a covenant and they gave you something hold my hands shout jesus, jesus. i command that covenant jesus. that demonic thing time your life and this miracle service it lives now in the name of jesus you too where are you from i'm from kogi state you are from kogi state the same thing hold my hands look at me I command that devil to leave you now whatever yoke please don't come out if I don't call your case are you part of them mr. man young man you're part of them in the name of Jesus I set you free bring the, your, you two. come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out I'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family the lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands 
I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I break the yoke over your life now out now there is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly i want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep up where's the mic how long you you are an usher you how long three weeks. Eh? Three weeks. for three weeks you've been caught lay your hand on your chest you too lay your hands on your chest you too huh? Substance. your what hold on please guys hold on yours is what the substance you spoke about what substance lift your hands lift your hands lift both of them i'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body i place the word of god upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this do you know what i just saw the lord opened my eyes and i saw like a cage and in the cage i saw snakes that's all i'm seeing that's all i'm seeing lift your hands everybody the lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation there are people who represent that oppression it will leave now the Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. Whose destiny is that? Right now, whose destiny is that? I wave my hands in the name of Jesus. Please release them for your glory. Release them now. Help them, please, Jesus Christ. Inside, outside. Be out of that cage now. I see snakes, serpents. Some of you see them in your dreams. They must go now. They are leaving you now. Now. They are leaving you now. I command liberty. 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 Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Like J A N E. Jane. 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 I'm also hearing another name, Victory. Is it Victory? Like Victory. Victory. Please don't come out if that's not your name. What's your name? Jane. Your name is Victory. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kazachat. Kazachat. Is it Kazachat? Who is that? Kazachat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kazachat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kazachat. Is it, I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom, is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom, Nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Listen, that is your name. You are, why are they here? I call their names. I'm going to lay hands on you. Except for you, I don't even know why the rest of you are. But please, I want you to believe. 
the moment I lay my hands on you, something will happen. The Lord is saying I should start with you. Lord, open her door now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands. Reproach leaves your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Reproach leaves your life now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Reproach leaves your life now. Reproach leaves your life now. Hold my hands. Call your parents and tell them the Lord is giving them breakthrough. Your family, your entire family. Delta State. Breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. The serious witchcraft over your life. Hold my hands. Lord, the Lord is asking me to walk with you. This is how your destiny is opening up. That's what the Lord is asking me to do. Walk with you. To walk with you. Something is happening. It's a prophetic act. You will not help her to walk with you. Opens in the name of Jesus. Your destiny opens up now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. This girl, lift your hands where you are. I'm seeing wind around you. And the Lord is, that wind is going anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and the lord said his restoration i stretch my hands upon you right now i release that grace for restoration restoration there are seven other people who will tap from this anointing this same anointing right now seven seven right now the anointing for restoration is coming upon them receive it right now wherever you are Lekate praskata baratu shubrediara. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people. God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. 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 The Lord is stepping into his life right now. Seth. Is there someone with that name? Seth. Have you found the mama I'm talking about? Don't worry, let them come. Let them come. Doesn't matter. With your daughter. Mama. Kai. There is the spirit of death on your family. I'm going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. You came from where, mama? From Edo State. From Edo State. Yes, but I'm living in Wusasa. You live in Wusasa, yes. but you came from Edo State. Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Set. You too. You are an usher. Okay. Kai, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you, but I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please, don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took, what's the name of this thing they take? We we, And you were high. You were about to cross the road. And then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it. Just running and killing you. There is somebody here. You smoke. Please, don't be. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not like you are not a serious person. But this thing you started taking it from when you were small and it's destroying your life you want to be free but you can't leave it please don't be ashamed come out now quickly please if you are still thinking about it remain on your seat some you have to be free now come out i'm seeing one you wore jeans dress like your shirt i don't know if it's your shirt is jeans who is that no no there, there's another come out i will pray for you this this is not the only guy just keep them here i will pray for him 
I'm seeing another person outside the second overflow. You are standing on the road. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. Speaking to you. This thing they roll and they smoke. And then you even, I'm seeing you swallowing a drug. I don't know what drug is that. Please come out. Come out. Clap for them as they come out. Join them quickly and come. Whether I mention your case or not, you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction. Indian hem, whatever, forward march. Come here, your salvation. Come, sir. Please appreciate them. Clap for them. Some of them are not bad people. It's a spirit. Don't be ashamed. Please usher, uh, direct them so that they come here. I'm seeing up to five ladies in this group up to five ladies come don't be ashamed don't let anyone laugh at you please this is a miracle service join them we we codeine whatever it is join them whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not come and join them please quickly that addiction must be broken now who can stand against the lord no one can coming the devil is a liar who can stand against our king no one can no one will oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's a river of the jesus hallelujah I'm seeing a very small boy, very small boy, very small boy who is supposed to join them. Young man, please hold on. Please, if the parents of the boy are here, don't flog him. Please, this is a very small boy. You will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing. He saw an elderly person smoking it. Come out. There is a small boy here. I know what, drag him out. Come. Where is the boy? Come out, please. Gentlemen, I'm going to pray for you. Don't worry. You are not bad people. I'm seeing a number of ladies, up to five ladies. They are refusing to come out. There's nothing to be embarrassed. Jesus Christ wants to set you free. This is a miracle service. It's not like you have evil people. That's not what we are saying. It's a spirit. You don't stop by counseling. Mama, there is a spirit of death over your family. And I will pray for you. I will pray for you in the name of Jesus. Who is this? Your daughter. What's your name, my dear? Lillian. Hold on. Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? I've been having problems with my tongue. No. 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 You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problems with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've 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 got a guest and 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 they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant, but you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? Yes, How long has it been? Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now, assuming a brother has been trusting God to marry this sister, do you think the brother will marry her? Please help me. Do you think he will marry her? You look at her now and you think she's five or six months pregnant, but she's not pregnant. Kai. There is a lady who has refused to come out. The power of God is going to come upon her outside. You are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord outside. That lady, you were a sincere lady, but I, I don't know if it's um, another lady. I don't want to say what I'm seeing, not to embarrass you. Because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this. There are other things that I see that I may not be able to talk about. I'm asking you to come out. God wants you to be free for the sake of your family. 
the power of God is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the Lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles I have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam I will pray for you mama yeah I'm okay do you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak english or whatever any language please if i call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord bringing restoration to your life this is what i am seeing and the lord is asking me to pray for you can i pray for you ma'am i will pray for you I have to pray. I'm seeing not you, but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident, traveling to Abuja and having an accident. We have to pray. I'm not saying it will happen. Once God reveals it is broken. Lord Jesus, stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy. You don't have to know her. Please stretch your hands and pray. Lord, we avert death. We avert death now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we avert death. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Mama. Is there a name like Gracilda? Is it Gracilda or Gracilda? Gracilda or Gracilda. Something like that. Gracilda, Gracilda. Something like that. If that sounds like your name, I'm sorry if I don't mention it well. The Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Grisilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come out. Eh? Jacinta. No. But come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria, I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand anybody that is not designed by god i separate you and him forever say amen in jesus name gracilda gracilda i'm hearing gracilda something will that please if it's not you no problem but that's what i'm hearing mama let's pray in the name of jesus christ i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit new beginning for you hold up please in the name of jesus christ my dear lay your hands on your stomach Kai. Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies, you are inside here. There is an embargo of barrenness on your family. Fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo. You don't even know. It's in your family, it may not be in your life. But I'm seeing it right now. The angel of the Lord is locating two ladies right now and is breaking that embargo. Thank you, Father. I put the word of God upon this prophetic word. That embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's a small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you mama I decree and declare let hardship live your life in the name of Jesus Christ let hardship live your life 
in the name of Jesus hold on I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance the power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place this is somebody's deliverance this is somebody's deliverance Lord set them free right now right now right now I'm seeing something rolling around this room this room this room this row shala sobari atas kabanda bria legetege basharatos kabridia there's no hiding there's no hiding someone in this row someone in this row someone in this row hardship over your family is being broken right now i'm stretching my hands this row right there father locate that person right now right now right now right now right now in the name of Jesus Christ mama come I want you to rejoice look at me the Lord hold on the Lord is saying I should tell you that where you have been crying you will begin to laugh you have been crying for 30 years and the Lord is saying your breakthrough has come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ please shake for me come madam Hold my hands. The Lord is there and should tell you it's your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your season of laughter. Your season of laughter. Look at me. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her hands be loose. Your hands are tied. I lose your hands in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. open doors open doors open doors open doors open doors that's what the lord is saying open doors the lord has said you have waited too long it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you're a small girl but the things you know and what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ I want us to pray for these gentlemen before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, sir. who shot you I'm a soldier I was shot by my colleague you are a meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you huh? but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you Hi. you are a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your cross up look at this look at this look at this walk as fast as you can don't be afraid turn around turn around come because your wound is not healing there is a wound but there is not healing from today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ.
the Lord who has perfected this leg will also perfect you. Where are you now? You are in Zaria. You are still in the force. Yes. You are still in the force. Ah? Huh? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Do you believe God can favor? Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you. Huh? Look at me, brothers and sisters. I want to break this addiction from your life now. Are we together? You are very sincere people. Some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends. Some of you were initiated into these things by spirits. I'm going to lay my hands on you. While the congregation, whether your child is here or not, whether your brother is here or not, as you are praying, you are sowing a seed for your own home. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stretch your hand. Don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any. It's none of your business. Koinonia is a, it's like a hospital. Stretch your hands. I will lay my hands on every one of them. Please, all of you should pray. I want to break addiction from your life. Don't feel condemned. Jesus will help you. It must be broken right now. Broken right now. Broken right now. Any kind of addiction. Out. Out. Now. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus. Out. Look at this guy. Out. Break from his life now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be set free. Be set free. As soon as I lay my hands on you, continue praying. Be set free. Addiction, break. Break in the name of Jesus. Hold my hands, darling. No addiction for liquor. No addiction for drugs. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head. Out of her life now. In the name of Jesus. I break that addiction. Ah. Hey Jimmy, come. The Lord is saying you should pray for this guy. He will pray for you. This guy needs serious prayer. Just lay your hands on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Out! Out! Now! I command that devil. This is somebody that loves God but this addiction must be broken right now I break it right now I break it right now hold my hands you are a nice lady but we have to break this thing Lord please for your mercy let it be broken in her life in the name of Jesus Christ 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 hallelujah the Lord is asking me to minister to somebody I'm seeing a very interesting case you love God please don't be ashamed there is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to who is that person I want to pray for you now whether you are sick or not come and stand here particular pain reliever you can't help it you can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it it's a spirit pain reliever I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital God is visiting addictions this night quickly come don't sit back and say I'm all right allow God set you free let them come look at this pain I don't know what it is but I hear my spirit pain reliever Whether you are sick, whether you are fine, the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it. If you, you can prefer to take it than to eat food, it must go right now. That's why God put this meeting to help people. There's one of you, fire is coming on you now. After that fire comes on you, then I'll pray for the rest. 
that's the instruction God is giving me one of you fire literal fire is coming upon you from heaven as I lay my hands upon you that addiction breaks right now stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken now if you have for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of Jesus broken now in the name of Jesus broken now in the name of Jesus it's broken now in the name of Jesus broken in the name of Jesus place your hand on your stomach God is not only setting you free he's setting you free from something else let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ addiction broken now addiction broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost addiction is broken now in the name of Jesus Christ broken now hold my hands let her go in the name of Jesus Christ there is a spirit that wants to destroy your life I command now there's no hiding place for you by the power of the Holy Spirit you must be set free you are standing in for somebody no problem in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural freedom hallelujah praise the Lord now praise the Lord please accept you are nursing a child or doing something let's all rise those outside they are still praying for you no problem all other people please stand up rise up I want us to pray if you are yet to submit your prayer request please do it quickly the Bible says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come in one minute God can turn your life around everyone stretch your hands here and pray I'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart Lord I will not have to write this again pray I've written it the Bible says after two days please if there are still people coming bring it quickly it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up online here please pray I'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the God of heaven visit men and women are you praying now pray shalakata pratakatosa pretiyash in the next one minute i'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say lord this is the last of the prayer request that i'm having to write concerning this issue hallelujah agree with me with a loud amen in the name of jesus christ I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now Turn it around now. Let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now. Every case here said by men to be impossible, we, we collide that case with the power of God and we produce testimonies now. Whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now. 
Whoever must lead for this prayer to be answered leads now. Whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now. Whoever must hear God for this prayer to be answered hears God now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may your people not have to write this again. Agree with me, may your people not have to write this again. Lord, I pray that before miracle service April, let every request here be turned into a testimony. May the fire and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request. The same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah, may fire fall on this now. It has been prayed for, you will not write it again. It has been prayed for, you will not write it again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please lift up your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen, we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation. Listen carefully. There is a very spectacular outpouring. God wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom. Not just to know him. God wants to equip us with mysteries. Are we together? Number two, there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of God for performance. For performance. Not just that you had God and it never happens. Not just that you speak and it never happens. Number three, this is personal to us as a family of faith. God has declared that is our year of triumph. I want you to believe this word. Oh. Believe it. Otherwise, you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing. And then you will keep clapping. I'd like you to insist. We still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight. Insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify, make up your mind and say, no, God, I must stand before your people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As I speak over your life now, among the many things I want to speak, right now, I want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance. Many of you may not know what this anointing is. Listen carefully. Lift your hands. He said, who has ever heard that a city was built in one day? But as soon as Zion travels, there is a grace that is coming upon the people of God. Hear me. For performance. He said, blessed is she that believes. For unto her, not unto them. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This is not a corporate thing. Unto her there shall be. There are many things God has said that has not come to pass. There is a grace that engenders performance. I prophesy to you now. In the name of the Lord God who called me and sent me. May that unction that will make results appear speedily. Let it come upon you like fire now. Let it come upon you like fire now. Receive it now, it's yours. Receive it now, it's yours. Receive it now, it's yours. Performance, performance, performance. Shake it, la bata. La prete get the soto ropa shiata. Grace for performance. Everything 
hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by God I decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now I prophesy the spirit of the Lord is upon me I speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of Jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by God I put fire upon your feet and I command speed now I put fire upon your feet I command strength speed strength speed strength speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is God in your life I release that dimension of favor now listen you can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of God you will struggle for nothing please hear me I prophesy it again whoever is lacking favor on his life I decree from this night carry favor inside outside everywhere online carry favor let me prophesy over finances whatever makes money run away from you don't say i'm talking about money you need it for what is coming in ahead whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury i turn it around now 
I turn it around now. I pray for every student here. Bala suda kabari katoshela brigati skalabrati the kind of results you have never seen i release it to you now i release it by the spirit i release it from the spirit in the name of jesus christ anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments they have trampled upon you i decree and declare may the angel of god responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest i pray for your loved ones i pray for you whoever is called jobless here yeah. before next miracle service get something doing now i prophesy it again whoever is called jobless before next miracle service i don't know how it will happen but get a good job there are people here trusting god for direction very clear direction for the next level of their lives could be maritally could be geographic location whatever it is hear god in this season like never before hear god in this season like never before lift your hands i release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now sapoto so receive it right now from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Hear me? Whoever mocks your passion for God goes down immediately. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in Koinonia tonight, may their prayers be answered. Every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside, I tear that veil completely in the name of Jesus. favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit i'm praying it again begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit the mantle of honor that god has put upon my life god has put upon this ministry you are part of this vision you are under this grace there's no reason why it should not work in your life I command it to start speaking now no more dishonor in your life no more dishonor in your life 
hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night i release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night i don't know what took away your passion for the house of god but in the name of jesus may a love for the house of god like never before come upon you in the name of jesus the grace god released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you i speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked god in your life i command that in as you enter april from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter april it will not be april full it will be april wise it will be april breakthrough it will be april miracles it will be april speed agree with me again i'm praying with you between now and miracle service april please hear me results together with tears in your eyes for joy you will return with them results together with tears of joy in your eyes wave your hands and give jesus all the praise wave your hands and give jesus praise thank you lord for performance thank you lord for performance in the name of jesus christ hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain